people on who are viewing this on YouTube be able to hear a little bit better because this is very rudimentary. Okay, hello everyone on YouTube. I hope you're there. Um, this is Casey Durango. We are in Durham, North Carolina, the sun and fun capital of the world. Um, if any of you remember the old Jackie Gleason show when they would do the, the speedboat coming in off of Miami, which is actually the sun and fun capital of the world. Um, we're at the Durham Hilton near Duke University. This is the low carb support group meeting. We have an excellent turnout this evening. Some new folks, some returning folks. And um, for those of you who want to share your experiences, maybe even Dr. Eric Westman wants to share his experiences. He tried to sneak in the back. <laughs> but but we recognize him. Who many, how many have seen Dr. Westman's very famous white coat video? We love the white coat video. If he had 10 cents for every time that that has been shown, he would not be with us this evening. <laughs> he would be on another permanent cruise. We, we took place on we, uh, the low carb cruise, which FYI, it's not a low carb cruise. The food is normal food. You just have to do the same thing that we do every day, which is make wise choices. There just happens to be wall to wall, floor to ceiling food, gambling, and alcohol. So the ship is essentially a floating addiction center. But you just learn to deal with these things. Um, so that was great. There were great lectures. It was a lot of fun. Um, from my own personal experience, I can tell you an unknown side effect of being in a state of ketosis, which I have been for a really long time, or two, four, unknown to me, is that being in a state of ketosis makes you make an idiot of yourself on the dance floor every <laughs> night but I enjoyed every second of it. It was really great. So if you have a chance to attend next year's Low Carb Cruise, it is going, this one was out to Alaska. They're reverting back to the Caribbean. So go to the Low Carb Cruise Facebook page and all the information is there. It's a lot of fun. Now, y'all are really kind, but you're not here to listen to me. Is Dr. Westman available to come up and share? <laughs> and if you're not, that's cool, because I can keep talking. <laughs> um, just to let you know, I have a little microphone here that might help with something. Well, it doesn't doing. make it any louder out there. No, but it's for the it is for your viewing audience, which is oh, popping in right okay. there. You see people like comments. Oh, this is on your your fa You're going to be famous after this. <laughs> Doctor Westman will be famous after he appears on my YouTube channel, right? Because nobody knows who he is otherwise. So oh, you don't, right. have <laughs> <laughs> don't have to be a parent. Don't have to be a watcher. It's going to be all over the place. We already have we have 87 people watching now. Everyone say hey to Dr. Westman. Hey. <laughs> you, you, two, you count as well. The ones that bother to actually drive here and come and show up. You count as well. All right. So here's what we do. We um, ask for people who are new, and there are a lot of new folks here tonight. And I know some have traveled quite the distance to come. We're going to ask if you're comfortable coming up. And sharing. If you don't want to be on camera, that's fine. I'll actually move the um, the video so that you don't have to be on, on camera. But it is easier for other folks to hear your story if you come up. Did, would, is there anyone that is here for the first time that would like to share what brought them here, how how they came to be low carb or keto or whatever variation there is? Again, and, and husbands and wives are you do it, you do it, you do it, you do it. You do it. <laughs> If anyone's comfortable doing it, no one has to. It's totally fine. Okay, no takers, no takers. All right. Oh, all right, Christy. You can both come on up. Okay. And if you just hold this right back here, and I'm going to step out of the way. Hi, I'm Christine, and this is my husband, Rod. And we drove down from New York to see can, Dr. Westman. Can you all hear? Okay. You just project out loud. All right. We drove down from New York to see Dr. Westman um, after um, I got a diagnosis of diabetes. My lovely doctor wanted me to have a gastric sleeve surgery. And I said, no, I don't think so. And started looking. And thank God we found both of you. And um, we're on our way. It's mm -hmm. six weeks, and we've lost a chunk of weight. More to go. More to go. So thank you both. And you feel better. You came down from New York just for this, for, for to see Dr. Westman, not for Absol this. Well, both. We stayed over for this. <laughs> but um, no, we came down from New York just to see Dr. Westman, and I and I have to thank you because finding you 
helped us to find Dr. Westman. And together, both of you are saving our lives. So we can enjoy the rest of it in a healthy manner. Well, so that, that's thank fantastic. You. Well, thank you. 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 I'm basically along this thing for a free ride. I give my <laughs> wife all the credit. She found the diet, and I've been trying to diet over the years. Uh, some success over the years, take off a little bit, but then it came right back on and stuff. And uh, my doctors, and there's a slew of them, have all been pushing me to lose weight, lose weight. I sleep now with a CPAP machine because I'm overweight and stuff like that. Uh, I have a bad kidney, and... Uh, I had a quadruple bypass 16 years ago and all of these other things. And uh, it seems like, you know, doing this diet, it's just like my, my wife was either going to be surgery or something else. There's something else we came across. Thank you, God, for showing it to her when we did. And uh, it seems like a great thing. And it's a different than any other diet I've ever tried because most of the food you can eat is food I do want to eat too much of anyway. And the other thing is, the amazing thing, every other diet, as soon as I start it, all I'm thinking about is food because I'm constantly hungry. Without the sugar, without the carbs, the hunger goes away. Why is this such a big secret? Thank you. And I'm glad <laughs> to be here and thank you, Peter. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, do you have anything you want to add? Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> all right. Hey, Jane. So, uh, why is it such a secret? Why, why is it such a secret your hunger goes away after a day or two? It's because it's so unbelievable, nobody believes it. So even today, doctors only learn about this by coming to a clinic where a doctor is doing this. They don't believe it through research, through talking to another doctor. They have to sit in my office, usually for two days. And then they come out. It's like an infomercial, basically. And so we've planted seeds in all over the country and in the UK actually now Australia has come through the Durham clinic here um, uh, and so why people don't know because they don't believe it can happen there are other pressures to have you always eat things and um, oh yeah and who makes money from the fact that you eat less nobody, nobody. right so so the, the forces of Drug companies want you to have drugs. Food companies want you to have food. That's part, part of it, too. But that's one reason why we created companies to make new products, to make new clinics available with people who do understand it, to spread the word. Uh, but yeah, why isn't it's the best kept secret, and yet it works. And any other comments on how, why isn't, um, why doesn't everyone know about this? Because I know most of you have been telling all your friends. Well, <laughs> why don't we do this when we uh, invite the new people to continue to share their story? Hey, why don't we invite new people? Okay, it's a great Although, idea. Can't we, at one point, can't we talk about the cruise a little yes, bit? Yes, we can. Because it, it's really not just an addiction center. Well, I, maybe I overstated that just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Hyperbole for the sake of emphasis. Unless you're addicted to great scenery. Great scenery. It was great, great stuff. Yeah, yeah. And awful dancing. Um, so, <laughs> okay, new yes, folks. Yes, new folks. Come on up. <laughs> and just project out there and don't worry about pulling that too close. Um, my name is Julie Slatke and I drove an hour to get here. A little bit louder. Oh, sorry. No, out to yes. them. Oh, talk sorry. <laughs> yeah, talk to the man in the far seat there. Okay. I am Julie and I drove an hour to get here, which is nothing to see Dr. Westman. I'm very starstruck because I've followed his research for years years and i just started the ketogenic lifestyle recently and i've lost like 12 pounds um but i found casey on facebook which has led me here tonight and i'm just so thankful um but i've just you know i'm just honored to be here and casey thank you so much but i am a uh, special ed teacher and i have a very stressful job and the one thing that i have learned to love about you know is I don't have to get caught up in the numbers with calories and fat and I was becoming like obsessed with the numbers and so that's been the biggest freedom for me is not having to worry about it just eat what you're supposed to eat so. 
Thank you so much, Julie. Where did you come from? Reed's Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. Come on. Okay. Let's just do this. There we are. So, hello. I'm really looking forward to our appointment. I didn't know anything about you until now. So, this is great. Um, I've been a diabetic for 22 years. I've done Dr. Atkins way back in the day. Really uh, had some success with that, but also had some challenges like no gallbladder and you know, all that stuff. So uh, recently I've been on like there's no seeds of grass, so I haven't had bread or anything for like three years. And my numbers did drop a lot, and, but I stopped losing weight. It just kind of flatlined. And I look back today on my journal, I measured myself every Sunday morning. Nothing for a long, long, long time. Not, not the kind of results I had with Atkins back in the day. Not certainly what I thought I should have been so religious about. I had 30 parts before I knew you said 20 parts. But um, even still, I expected to lose weight. I lost 0.6 pounds after about 10 days. I was ready to scream. And um, so I'm really coming here now looking for information, hoping there's some little thing that you're going to find that's going to bust this open. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, so. Do you want to troubleshoot? Yes. Well, does anyone here want to troubleshoot? Yes. So. Your your biggest challenge right now for you is that you're saying you're not losing. You're stuck. You're plateaued. Yeah. Do you have an idea in your head? First of all, how much more do you want to lose? Yeah, uh, I want to lose. Uh, well, the intermediate goal is four pounds, and then I'll be back to where I was in 1985. But the real marriage weight would be like another 12 pounds. So, so not a whole lot of weight. No. Not not a whole lot of weight. But, so you were doing 30 grams of carbs, and is that total or net? Or do you, and do you know the difference between total carbs and net carbs? No, I just look at the label and add it up. Okay. So is that total or net? Well, if you're not, who, who would like to answer that question? About looking at the label and how you read a label for carbs. What do you guys do? Do you just look at the carb count and that's it? Just total carbs. And the, so in some people, if that's all you're looking at, that's fine. That's total carbs. But some people will subtract out grams of fiber, which are listed. And that's called net carbs. And the reason behind that is because supposedly some fibers are not absor uh, absorbed and they somehow don't count. It's, and it can make the product look lower in carbs. And it can, well, that might be the actual yeah. reason. So, but you know, getting lower, and, and maybe... 15 or 20 years ago, 30 grams of carb would have been enough, but things can change as we get older and our bodies shift. And maybe you just do need to downshift that carb stuff. So may I jump in? Oh, if you think Is you have change? anything to add. <laughs> so, I'm reminded of uh, an interview where um, someone called in and said it's not working. And uh, the interviewer uh, on the other microphone, I'm looking at her in the eye, and the interview said, well, Dr. Westman, what do you think? And I said, well, you know, what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm doing 20, 30 grams of carb. I'm doing low carb. And I said, well, okay. How can, so I'm thinking, how can I make this as fast as possible? How can I really get to the, the nut, nuts and bolts? Um, so I just said, what do you eat? And so the first thing the person on the radio who's calling in said is, well, in the morning, I have some orange juice, and I have my, oh. my mango. And the, the interviewer on the other side said, it's not low carb. You know? <laughs> like, so, so I would, my strategy would be to say, so what do you eat and drink? Well, breakfast, lunch, if you've been in my clinic, you've seen me do this. It's, what do you eat? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and, well, I don't eat. No, I don't want to know what you don't eat. I want to know what you do eat. And then you can actually have people write it down so that a practitioner can come in, and I can know what people want me to hear and what we what want me to see pretty quickly. And then if there are a few red flags, like blanks and and, um, and not a whole lot on the page, I, I kind of know maybe the person's not telling me everything. <laughs> but that, that's just part of being a practitioner and understanding 
that people want to please me and say they've done everything correctly. So when you eat, when you well, breakfast, lunch, dinner, you even drink a yeah, typical day. I, I uh, subscribe to my fitness pal. So religiously, as I'm sitting there at the table, I'm putting it in to track my carbs and everything else. And this morning, for example. We can't hear what you're saying. Talk to us. I just project a little bit more. I'll have, uh, this morning I had deviled eggs and tea, just plain tea. And then I have, that was it for breakfast. Then around 11.30 I had cheese stuffed celery and some uh, sausage link cut into pieces on top of a spinach salad that I got out of my paleo cookbook that it had mushrooms and green peppers and uh, onions sauteed and dumped on top of the spinach and then I had dinner tonight. And what would you typically have for dinner somewhere else? Well, my favorite meal is steak and salad. So, a salad. A salad, any dressing? Yeah, usually balsamic. How many carbs in the balsamic vinaigrette? Uh, Does anyone have balsamic vinegars <laughs> at times that are six or eight? So you just gotta watch the label. So, um, and then the beverages throughout the day. Water. I just drink water. Occasionally I'll have unsweet iced tea. Talk about the medicine. Ah, well, so uh, we haven't gotten to the meds yet. I'm not done with the food. <laughs> I'm not done uh, the drink. Well, so, uh, so the first thing you want to do is ask people what they're eating and drinking. And, and then um, filling in things like any snacks. Usually, if I have a snack, It'll be something like vegetables, like sliced cucumbers, the cheese, or if I have a snack attack at night, I started this thing where I, I get a little plate and I put pepperoni slices on it, dill pickles, and two slices of cheese. And that's my snack. The TV, you know, a TV monster, let's see, eat food. Anyway. The, I'm sorry, the what? The TV monster makes you eat food. Oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a liminal stuff. Oh, you mean you're eating out of habit rather than hunger? No, I'm Go hungry. Ahead. I'm ah. hungry. But instead of things like um, sugary things that I haven't had in a very long time, but I did go in between, I went to salty kinds of things. Like popcorn, but I haven't done that in a very long time. How many carbs in popcorn? Uh, I don't know, but there's 130 calories. Oh, okay. So, so you gotta know what you're eating. So, and this is um, being harsh on you. Thanks for being a good sport. Um, you gotta no, know I what you're. Know. You gotta know what you're putting in your mouth. Look at the label like crazy. Mm -hmm. Or another technique is to get the sum total of the whole day. To see if you're measuring ketones. Do you measure ketones in any way? Yes, I just bought test strips uh, this past week, and uh, I am only in the trace. Or once I think I imagine going into that thing the next one. Yeah. I was really trying pink. to see it. I wanted, I wanted it to be pink, but uh, I don't know. I well, so that's a good sign. I, I was um, skeptical that you were, you would be in ketosis, but. Urine ketones, even if it's trace, means that you're excreting ketones, which means you're burning fat really well, which is, makes me think that the carbs are truly mm -hmm. low enough. And I, but I was thinking in my mind, boy, there's a lot of vegetables going in and leafy greens. One of the most common mistake I see is people aren't strict every day. So this was one day. Are you? Have you been? So if someone comes in every two weeks, every month. I'll do this dance, and then I'll look and say, you know, look, have you been strict every day? And you know, it's like the um, if someone says I've taken all my medicine and, and they have ten medicines four times a day, if they haven't missed one pill, you know, are they human? Right? So have you been strict? Well, every the problem day? that I had was I was so strict. About the third day, I would I would just crash. I could, I didn't have enough energy to go from the bedroom to the kitchen, and so then I got worried that I'm hurting myself. 
And so then I would eat semi-normal food. Carbs. Have more carbs that day. So my energy would pick up. But overlying all of that so is my insulin. Fishy. Something's really fishy. I wish Wait, you would tell medication. me. Medication. Did you say medication? medication? So I'm thinking that so early on when you change what you're eating, there are two things to think about. One is the blood sugar energy. Everyone thinks about that. It's usually not that unless you're on a blood sugar medicine. It's usually the blood pressure. So the, the blood pressure makes you feel puny, you, and you need to add salt back in. Has anyone heard adding salt back in even early on? So, so actually there are two red flags. One is the continued hunger. May, you know, I just don't hear this. It should be, I'm just not hungry. And then the second part is the, the crashing, the, and then automatically having carbs. I, I, I really don't know if it's the blood sugar or if it's the blood pressure. Well, so, so my insulin dropped. I was 100 units a day, and now I'm... Oh, wait. Have, wait, wait you're on medication. Yeah. And the insulin is making you hungry. This is making sense to me now. Yeah. Oh, wait, you have diabetes. We yeah. didn't know. For 22 years, I think that's okay. one of the or first things say, I said. I yeah, okay. I said I've been diabetic for 22 years. Well, so that's probably good. So, so this is just the thought process. If if I don't hear some or something, it's okay. so what have you done with the diabetes management? Well, the good news, which I was telling Kayla, I should probably just be happy about this, is that my insulin's just dropped down to practically nothing, 100 units to maybe five. Um, with the what blood but, um, sugars doing what? My blood sugars when um well wake up and it's still morning is always high. It's about between one eighty five and two hundred. Except for the other day, I also decided, reckless as I am, to go off of uh, Janument because I'm maxed out. So that's another time. blood diabetes. Yeah. No, this is good. <laughs> she told me not to take. Well, yes. she didn't tell me. <laughs> I take it back. I decided I wasn't gonna. I was gonna see what happened. So when you bottomed out and felt bad, what was your blood sugar? Two sixty-six. Okay, so it wasn't the blood sugar causing you to bottom out, or was that after you ate carbs? I don't know. Okay, so that's still my hunch is that it was blood pressure. But so, why are you taking insulin still? I wonder. I quit. I don't. Oh. Unless, but I still test. And if it's really high, then I'll take five units. And so, now, it's a sliding scale. If the blood sugar is over 200, you might take five units of well, insulin. It's more like, because I really I read all about that. Good. When this is insulin good. is present and when sugar's there, you can't be a fat burner. So, you need one or the other. So. I'm trying to minimize the insulin, and um, this is what is so frustrating, is that it's not getting me the results that I thought I should have. My okay, so <laughs> you're doing great. No, really. So um, don't do this at home without, you know, this is one of those, uh, we just saw the car going <laughs> through the, the uh, ad, and it says, don't, these are drivers who are trained. Don't try this at home, right? So unless you really know how to manage blood sugars, insulin, and all that, I don't recommend people do it on their own. But you did, so that's okay, and you're you're here. Um, so um, so part of the issue, if you're dealing with diabetes, is um, the blood sugars might not become normal for a while. That's because of insulin resistance, meaning the the belly fat. Yeah. And so what you want to do is get off the medicine as fast as you can. To enhance the weight loss of the belly fat, which is the underlying cause of the diabetes. So, not knowing your whole story, and, and thanks for well, sharing. We have an appointment. We do have an appointment. Yeah, but it's not until October. Oh, you need to go to Hill Clinics. Well, well, let's talk about that after yeah. after the. Okay. Um, but so, what I would do is take a full history, understand all of the the background that you've had. Um, what were the blood sugars when you were eating carbs and taking 100 units of insulin? Were they better or worse? Um, blood sugars? No, they were higher. Yeah. They were so higher. most people will have higher blood sugars on higher amounts of insulin. That's right. Because they were eating higher amounts of carbs. 
So just looking at the improvement in diabetes, the blood sugars are lower. They're not normal yet, but you're off 100 units of insulin. Yes. And now off the Janumet pill. Well, I stuck another one close. today because it scared me to wake up and, and look at 266. Yeah. And so what I do is a lot of the mind mojo of it's just a number, you're <laughs> fine. Um, the blood sugar doesn't mean the same thing as before because you don't have all these carbs going through your body. And so you've been accultured to be worried and anxious about it, just a little number. Yes, and so that, that takes time to unlearn that. Um, and then getting off the medication will help the weight come down even more. It looks like we have a little, um, a little food education as well. Although, do you have page four? Do you know about page four? I do now. <laughs> okay. Yes. Because you wouldn't have um, some of the things that you mentioned, but gosh, how about uh, applause for story and improvement? So, so I held out withholding judgment, what I wanted to do is say fantastic job from the start. Wow. But, um, so I nice. hope you don't mind we, we uh, went through that no, teaching I, process. I, so. I, wanted, I want to know. So yeah. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Is there anybody wow. else who is new that would like to share what, what brought them here? Yes, sir. Miss. Mr. Myers, Mr. Myers, I happen to know, has, has driven away. <laughs> and he has a Facebook group called Central Virginia, uh, Central and Western Virginia Ketoans. Very good. So go ahead and introduce Ke Ke Almost 100 Ketoans. <laughs> Ketoans. Yeah. Keto so like we almost have 100 members now. Oh, that's great. I drove about two and a half hours from uh, near so the yeah. yeah. Speak out to those guys, okay. too. I'll just hold we can this. Do I drove about two and a half hours from uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. Down down here. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all downhill. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, I've been in ketosis. Well, I've been in keto for about uh, about a year now. Um, May of last year, I went to the doctor and he was going to write me a prescription for metformin. I said, "Well, hold on, I'm." Not sure I want to really start taking diabetes medicine. So I said, I'm going to take care of this with diet. He said, okay, well, he wrote me a list of what not to eat. And uh, I started researching the internet, going through everything I could find, YouTube, everything, you know. And, um, I actually found Butter Bob Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of convinced me. And, then I started watching a lot of the doctors on YouTube and things, and that kind of got me interested. And um, basically, by about June of last year, I was uh, starting keto, and it did it. Uh, I'm no longer diabetic. Uh, that was 65 pounds ago, when you so. I feel like Superman now. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I had a hard calcium score down recently, and I got pretty high numbers. I kind of want to. I like to talk to you about that. So that's really about it. Um, I've got you know a lot of a lot of damage from 60 years of uh, eating the standard American diet. So I've got a. Uh, do some repair work, but I do feel like Superman now. I've been working out. I feel better. I'm energetic. Um, I go to a nice meal and stuff, and it's like, well, I'm not really hungry. So, what do I do? <laughs> what should yeah. he do? Not, not really. Don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well. Well, thank you so much for traveling, and thank you for sharing. Thank you for starting your group because that's the that's the way the word how did gets you, spread. How did you get the group started? What was that? Um, that like? Actually, I was on the uh, two guy the two two keto, keto dudes, dudes. Mm -hmm. two keto dudes group, and uh, they were uh, moving everything to what's called ketogenic form. So they wanted to shut down the, the Facebook group because it had grown to like so astronomical proportions that they could all the admins and everything just couldn't keep up 
Well, you post a comment on there, and it, in a day, it's buried way below. You'll never see an answer to your question. So the forums kind of open up things so that you can answer, ask the question, and that question stays there. So you can find your question and find many people who have answered it. So I thought that was great. So what they were encouraging is everybody to start. You know, anybody that's been in the keto, start their own little group. So I said, yeah, I'll do that. So I started the group and you know, we're almost, almost 100 strong. So, that's right. Yeah. So I like to invite people who, even out of the area, who can answer questions for us. So I've asked all, a lot of other people too. So, yeah. so it's not just Central Virginia. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Amber Keithley, and I came here from Wilson. And I um, had been dieting because I had gone to the doctor and got that lovely diagnosis of pre-diabetic. And um, my biological um, father, or my biological father's parents, died in their um, late fifties, early sixties, from diabetes complications. So I knew that's where I was headed if I did not get a handle on this. Um, I, the doctor had given me some metformin, which I promptly didn't take. And um, I said, okay, I've got to do something. So I went to a nutritionist in Wilson. And we had to part ways because she insisted that my biggest meal of the day be breakfast, which I didn't love. I'm a natural intermittent faster. That's just the way I've always eaten. And um, I had to eat fish three times a week for breakfast, which made me want to throw up. Sorry. <laughs> so we weren't going to get along. And so I started, and I said, you know, I'd accidentally done low carb once before. And I say accidentally because I decided that sugar made me anxious. And so that was when I was younger. And so I had given up anything that had sugar in it. And um, I mean, I just looked at the label. If it said sugar, I didn't eat it. So I call that my accidental low carb and I lost a lot of weight back then. And then I just gradually had gained it back. And um, so I started saying, okay, you know what, let me see what this low carb thing is about. And I found dietdoctor.com. And when I found that, I was like, okay, why do I find doctors in Sweden? And then I started watching the videos. <laughs> and I see this doctor on there and he is so incredible. And I keep watching his videos and I keep trying to find more of his videos and more of his videos. And I'm like, why are these doctors always somewhere else? And in one of the videos, they flashed to the front of his clinic and it said Durham. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm like, so then I go straight forward. I said, okay, where is Dr. Westwood? And from that, I came to the HEAL program, the HEAL clinics. And my first visit with Dr. Westman was March 27th. And I saw him like a couple of days before I was getting ready to go on a trip where I was going to be drinking very heavily so, <laughs> and having a good time. And he kind of encouraged me to watch what I was eating and but have a good time. So, um, and I did. And I stayed on plan that time. And it was fabulous. And I have to say that I am down 6% body fat, um, about 23 pounds, about 45 inches. And it is, I have to say, the simplest and easiest and the most comfortable way I have ever eaten. And I have no desire to ever eat any other way. And I do spend a little bit of time on my soapbox because I do like everyone to know about this and I want them to eat this way. And um, so my husband asked me to step down occasionally. Um, <laughs> and he's actually eats... He eats keto with me at night. Um, he eats a lot of carbs during the day, and he's already lost so much weight that he's down to a 31 pant <laughs> on accident. So we're having to up his carbs a little bit. So, um, I want to thank you, Dr. Westman, because it has been most incredible to have gotten on this journey with you and to figure out how to make my life better. I mean, my A1C is down to the normal range, so. You're doing it. And, and, uh, I'm hearing a recurring theme. It's simple. It's easy. I don't want to eat any other way. 
for the most part, losing hunger. And there might be some tweaking that we need to do to get to that point where we do lose our appetite. Um, someone uh, who's not here this evening, but he had shared, and I know he's been a patient of yours, and we were talking about carbs, and he had reintroduced carbs just a little bit. He'd, he'd been at 20, then he went up to about 50, and he could tolerate it. He stayed in ketosis, but he did say that he was in a, an uncanny valley with that. He was in ketosis, but he noticed his cravings came back just a little bit. So there might be a little bit of a DMZ for carbs where you're in ketosis, but if, if you go too high, you're going to get your appetite back. So I, I thought that was an interesting observation. I've never heard anyone say that before. Anyone else new that would like to share? Would you like to step up? Oh, wait. I'm Lana Lockhart, and I'm from Roxville, North Carolina. Just 45 minutes away. I don't know how y'all did it. From New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only heard about keto. I'd never heard about keto until about three months ago, and I was uh, YouTube popping, and I found Farmer Mima, and she kept talking about she was going on a keto diet. And finally, I asked her, I said, what is the keto diet? And so she explained what it was, and I got to doing research, and I found Casey on Facebook and her Facebook page, and I loved what I heard. And I've been researching and learning. I started five weeks ago, oh, and two. Uh, we have diabetes in our family. My brother had type one. Uh, my mom and two other brothers uh, developed type two. And I didn't want that to happen. Like I say, the weight just kept coming on. <laughs> I could yeah, I yo-yo die, but I don't know anybody else. But I could go to Weight Watchers and lose it, and then I would gain it all back and more. So anyway, but to make a, a long story short, I started this uh, five weeks ago. I've got page four. I've been following it religiously. Um, and my husband's doing this with me. I've lost 15 pounds. I weigh in tomorrow, but I lost 15 pounds and I've lost 20 inches. And um, so I'm really thankful about that. But one of the most things that I'm thankful for is that uh, we ride motorcycles. Um, I have fibromyalgia and some other health issues going on. But I was able to get on the motorcycle without hurting myself. Oh, so, <laughs> no pain. I got on the motorcycle and I have the, it's like one of those uh, double legs and I have to hold on and throw my leg over and get on. And so I'm putting a lot of weight on this leg. No pain. So, but that is one of the things that will keep me, you know, just no pain. And I'm doing this because I want to feel better. Um, not for any other reason. I just want to feel better. And thank you. I've watched your videos. I watched the white coat, and I watched the grocery shop, and I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Twenty inches in six weeks is like crazy great. That's really awesome. And you bring up something about the loss of pain, and yes. I want to know, I because it was one of the first things I noticed. With probably within about two or three weeks. I'd gotten so used to just pain everywhere, from your ankles up to your neck, to your shoulders and your knuckles. And then one day I, I, I popped up from the sofa, and I hadn't popped in a long time. And I said, oh, holy cow. And for those of us who have been big a really long time, it is assumed that we're going to be uncomfortable, because of course you're uncomfortable, because you're really overweight. This was not about the overweight. I was still really overweight. But the anti-inflammatory properties of this and getting things that you love to do in your life, whether it's popping up from the sofa or throwing your leg over the goal wing or horseback riding or being able to get back on a bicycle or just being able to walk your dog without pain um, is unbelievable. Last month, a woman shared that she had been bedridden and then she was walking around here with, without anything. And by the way, an update for her, Jean, who made us all cry last month. She and her husband have each now lost 60 pounds. So that is really phenomenal. Uh, is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I'm so happy with the new people. Yeah. This is fantastic. Hi, my name is Dina, and I live here locally. And I did a study with Dr. Westman maybe 15 years ago. And um, my. A, a, kept that weight off for a long time and then it crept back up and I went on another study uh, Love to Lose uh, with 
maybe one of your peers, I'm not sure, using the Atkins program. Um, and that was a year ago, so I've been on the program solid for a little, just a little over a year now and lost a significant amount of weight and it cut that off. But I've sort of plateaued for a while. I keep my carbs, I don't um, check my ketones, but I keep my carbs around 20 or so, uh, sometimes less, sometimes no, definitely no more than 25, 28. Um, and that's regular carbs, not net. Um, and, but I am losing inches. I can tell a difference and other people can tell a difference in my clothes and all that. But I, I, um, since we, the study ended, I don't really have a, uh, a group to ask questions and get feedback and learn from. So like, I think like what, you know, maybe it's artificial sweeteners are a problem or anyway, I just wanted more resources like this to sort of bounce that off of so I can continue the process and keep it up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. That's great. Thank you. Um, anybody else who is new and would like to share? Did I see someone starting to get up? Oh, okay. Can I talk about um, You can talk about anything you want. The doctor from Sydney. You may. Absolutely. Did I, I can't remember. Did I mention the visiting orthopedic surgeon from Sydney, Australia? Okay, so it must have been since since last month. Um, talking about pain, talking about inflammation. Um, this is a doctor who came to visit the U.S. to give a, a lecture at the Mayo Clinic to help out there, and so he took a little side trip down to North Carolina from Rochester, Minnesota. And he told us a story that he already has a keto clinic going, next to his orthopedic surgery practice. And this is curious, so I get a lot of referrals from orthopedic surgeons, and the reason is they are having better outcomes after the orthopedic surgeries, no matter which one it is, the lower weight you are going into it. And in our area, sometimes the doctors won't even operate until the BMI or the weight is down to a certain level. So, so he came to learn about the clinic, but I, so, so what, I said, what are you doing? He said, well, you know, the idea was to beef up the orthopedic surgery practice and all that, but I'm really into the weight loss now. And, and it turns out that a third of the people who were on the list to get the surgeries no longer need the surgeries with the weight loss and the carb restriction, taking the carbs out of the diet, low carb diet, LCHF, keto, whatever you want to call it, because the pain's gone. So he's basically getting rid of a third of his business. Well, there's plenty of business. <laughs> and and now he's getting crafty, he's getting into elbows and stuff. <laughs> but um, that's just a testimonial again at the doctor level that large numbers of people will have less pain, even less need for operation on the knee. And so I said, well, people come to me, remember I'm not an orthopedic surgeon, people come to me and they look at me and they say, my knee is bone on bone, and look me in the eye and I'm like, oh God, that's terrible. <laughs> so I said to Dr. Uh, Dr. Duran, his name was, uh, what if, what if it's bone on bone? He said, oh yeah, that gets better too. Yeah, because the inflammation causing the pain. So it's not necessarily, so. It's not necessarily really Not bone necessarily the bone on bone level, uh, yeah. So so even people who tell you that, look you in the eye and, and you know, what are you going to say? Try it and see what happens. It's just food. It's just food. Can, can you share, I'm, I'm really interested, but, and actually I had someone contact me earlier today to ask you a question. If you are having surgery of any type, is there any reason that the ketogenic diet would be a problem, either pre-op, post-op, um, anything about it that's going to in, in interfere with recovery or pain meds or anything like that? No. Um, could you hear the question okay? So what about operations and surgeries? Um, now, assuming that you're not on any medication, just having a, a fat as fuel system, your body's running on fat, that's what ketogenic diet really means, that's a great way to go into an operation. The only downside is they might want to feed you carbs, and and, uh, and yes, they might give you dextrose in the vein and a fluid, but I don't think that's a big deal. Um, if you really want to fine tune it to that level, you ask them to do something that doesn't have sugar in the vein. But actually, the surgery, these are all anecdotal reports, but the surgeons and people who go through surgery say they're told that they recover faster than average if they go in keto. 
which just means you're getting sufficient protein and, and maybe the, the carb noise that might interfere with the, the healing has gone down. But no, there's no, no problem with eating no carbs or very low carb, being keto, being a fat burner, going into an operation. Thank you. Yeah. And Trisha, I know that you've had recent experience with maybe one or two surgeries and you know, and I think you shared one time, did you, did you ask in the hospital, and for, for those of you who don't know, there's a woman in the audience who has had surgeries, did you ask for something like a gluten-free diet, or, or am I making this up, to, in order to avoid getting the carb laden in the hospital food? Mm -hmm. You can order what you want. You can order what you like off our menu? Oh, huh? awesome. That's great. At a local Durham yeah. Regional Hospital. Duke Regional now. And so that's the other concern for mon need, or at least nerd need for monitoring, not only diabetes, but if you're having blood pressure medicines, what we most commonly see is the blood pressure goes down, we get to take away the medication, it, and you don't, I don't really know when that's going to happen. So you have to have some vigilance, and, and like you, in your case, the doctor didn't suspect it. They didn't really ask about it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So glad you're hearing that. So I'm all for home monitoring, not only of blood sugar, but of blood pressure. The cuff, even if it's a finger cuff, a blood, wrist cuff, a arm cuff. Easy for you to say. Yeah. So, but data are good. That's an old saying in the research world. To make sure it's plural. Data are data, good. Data are good. Yeah. Yes. That was a joke. You're supposed to laugh. That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> Bingo! Who who had who had seven nineteen? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were supposed to then have an adult beverage. Oh, drinking game! Yeah. yeah, every time Dr. Westman says that was a joke, you're supposed to laugh. We need to have a shot of tequila. Um, <laughs> it's a drinking. So, did, did they know that we were at the same table on the cruise? I don't know. For Would dinner you like every to talk night. About us? Tell so, us about uh, the cruise. It was awesome. I mean, I'm going to share my, the highlights for me. It'll take 10 seconds, and then I want you to talk about the lectures that you heard and everything. Highlight for me was, uh, other than being away with my lovely husband, was being able to sit at dinner most evenings with Dr. Westman, Jackie Everstein, and her adorable, wonderful husband, and a couple of other wonderful people. And just, I don't know, it was great to hear um, – and to get to know such interesting down-to-earth people. I mean, you are you may not know this, but you are considered a world expert on this field. Jackie Epperstein, for those of you who don't know, was Dr. Uh, Adkins' nurse. 
so generous, so giving of information, so open, and really driven to make things better. It was fantastic. That was a thrill. The glacier was pretty good too, but that was great. So I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Westman. He can share what he learned. Well, so the low carb cruise goes every year. The prior nine cruises had been in the Caribbean. So the 10th one was Alaska. So it was the largest number ever. Well, I don't remember the final count. 350. 350 or so. So we all get in a, the same conference room uh, during the, the days at sea and get lectures. And probably the highlights for me, I mean, it was the first time my teacher, Steve Finney, came on the cruise. And so Steve gave not only a couple lectures, but he also gave two-hour evening seminars that people signed up for. And, I mean, people just were firing questions left and right, and, and he was very generous with his time to be on the cruise. So hopefully he'll come again next year on the one which is going to be back to the Caribbean or at Mexico, Gulf of Mexico out of Galveston. But um, the, the cruise itself, of course, is great fun with excursions. But the real highlights, of course, were the geeky lectures. Um, some of the highlights, I mean, you know, the, the weird thing that doesn't make sense, but the more fat you eat over five days, you eat all this fat, your cholesterol goes way down. And so there's a, a, a lecturer who gave the method of how he does it. He asks people to do it, and he'll post the, the, the measures. And it's a way, before you go in for a blood test for insurance, you eat all of this stuff, and your blood cholesterol is down, you get a low rate on your insurance <laughs> by eating the opposite way of we were taught. So that's just kind of, he's actually looking for researchers to help him write up that information and then do a larger study. But So he's just an engineer himself who applied engineering principles to his own blood test. Really fascinating lecture. Um, and then, uh, uh, his name. Feldman, yeah, Dave Feldman, yeah. Dave, yeah. Um, other highlights, I mean, there were um, the doctor from Lucia. Oh, um, fantastic. From, uh, Lucia. 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 From Stanford. So she's helping Dr. Christopher Gardner analyze some of the data, and she kept talking about epigenetics. Epigenetics. So she had a great talk about, basically it means the environment in a big term, right? It means what you do can influence your, your genetic expression, what you eat can change your epigenetics. And, and anyway, she, she's low carver at heart, had, and then her mom was on the cruise mm -hmm. again, which is always fun. Um, yeah, so there were so many lectures. Can you talk, I, I thought it was very interesting, Dr. Ann Childers, and the impact of nutrition on mental, mental conditions, disorders, diseases, whatever they are. She treats children, adolescents, and adults. And she uh, is a psychiatrist, so she can prescribe medications, but she does try to incorporate nutrition. And there are cases of people who've been diagnosed and treated for bipolar. And it turns out they're not necessarily bipolar. Their food was messing them up. ADHD. Um, and then you cited a case study, which I thought was amazing that you had written up about someone who was in your clinic and you weren't treating anything other than diabetes and, and ob obesity. And I don't know if you want to share that again. But the idea that food can actually impact our, what are considered mental disorders, not all of them, and she still continues to give treatment and medications as needed, but she really closely monitors that. And she get, had all the science behind it, and I thought that was really fascinating. Yeah, Ann Childers is a great, um, great speaker, great, and brings in the mental health aspect to the diet. Um, then, of course, Tom Naughton, who has, who did the Fathead the movie? Has anyone seen Fathead the movie? Yeah, it's been out a while, but it's a great watch. I think it's Netflixable on Hulu. And um, so it's not Fathead where you buy. Life science pictures of celebrities like Casey or, or uh, uh, NBA basketball players, things like it's Fathead the movie. But in there, it's a great watch. So he's at it again with his wife, Sharita, and they have a book that's called Fatheads for Kids or something like that. But uh, I got a picture with them and, and the girls and uh, having them sign the book. And it's a, a must read if you're into pediatrics or you have kids who need to learn about how our bodies work. 
The metaphor is a spaceship. The spaceship is your body and the planet of junk food. You're going there and it, it's not your body's, your spaceship isn't designed to eat the fuel, I mean, get the fuel off the planet of junk food. Anyway, very cute, very clever. And they turn it into a movie, which we got a preview. And um, so anyway, I, I'm going to bring that book over to our pediatric obesity program and say, hey, you know, why don't you study this? Why don't you use it in the kids? Um, well, I may not have given the update that the Duke Pediatric Obesity Program uses a low-carb diet now. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about this before. Is there any reason that you know of that children, little children, big children, adolescent children, would be harmed by following a low-carb, high-fat, or ketogenic diet? I don't think so. I, I think eating real food without sugars and without starches that get digested through sugar is healthy for everyone. Is a child being in the state of ketosis, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, so, uh, I don't recall it. If you want to call it a state of ketosis, then I'm going to call it a state of glucosis. Okay. For people who are eating carbs and burning carbs. It just means you're a carb burner. But the problem with being a carb burner is like we just learned, if you're in a state of glucosis all day long, that's called diabetes. I just coined the term glucosis. You're supposed to laugh at me. <laughs> so, um, no, no, so it's not a medical term, but if you're going to say ketosis is bad, it's, it's just, no, it's just a. Oh, okay, a new so, condition. so the, the phrase a state of ketosis has like a pejorative that almost Oh, yes, okay, so osis means abnormal condition of in, etymol in the medical world. Fun so, fact like, for the day. like uh, babesosis, halitosis, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, anyway, no, ketosis is fine, but babies are born in ketosis. I mean, so they're born fat burning. So ketosis just means fat burning. In fact, maybe breastfed babies, breastfed babies yeah. So, um, uh, but if you feed carbs, you turn off the ketones. Thus, in some children, creating epilepsy. So there's a, a subgroup of the pediatric epilepsy where they can't use sugar in the brain. So by feeding the children sugar, you're turning off the ketones, which is what they need, and they have epilepsy. And so now it was only in the year 2005 when it was figured out that they don't have a receptor that transfers glucose into the brain that works. So unbeknownst to us, the parents, we were just feeding sugar and baby food and basically was creating epilepsy. And, and finally, you know, the ketogenic diet for children and epilepsy has been known for about 100 years, but nobody knew that this specific kind would always be fixed. You know, it was kind of like you had to try it um, and, and test it out. The Charlie Foundation is created to give, spread the word about the ketogenic diet for epilepsy for children. Uh, Charlie had epilepsy, or still does, but has been treated with the ketogenic diet. So that's another, um, going back to Ann Childers, Another uh, proof that what you eat can change the brain. In fact, you can fix epilepsy. So, um, Greg, and I think there's a couple of stories, a couple of folks here who have, who have children who have lost weight. Um, and if you want to come up, and, and I think this is really something going because our kids are getting big. Our kids are getting, uh, from what I see, our kids are getting bigger. And Dr. Robert Lustig, who is a juvenile endocrinologist, is that the right? Pediatric. Correct? Pediatric. Um, has, you know, he's, he was never trained how to deal with diet, type 2 diabetes in anyone under 50 or so, and now he's seeing it in seven-year-olds. Um, so our children are being damaged, and people are loath to, I think, to do a low-carb, high-fat. Well, they need their carbs. They need their grains, their healthy whole grains, and I think people are really fearful. They might do it to themselves, but they're fearful that they're going to damage their children. So if anyone wants to share an experience of, of their kids or adolescent kids, what's happened, that'd be great. And I want everyone to pay particular attention to, to Miss, to Terry's uh, garb, another hand-sewn, last month she was in bacon, bacon. <laughs> now she's in avocados. <laughs> come up with another one for next month. Um, <laughs> children in keto, um, 
some of my friends have noticed uh, that I have lost 25 pounds and then talking with my best friend who's here with me tonight, um, we talked about her son who was probably about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, 5'10", now because he's still growing and about 210 pounds. And she's like, I don't know what to do. She, they don't eat junk food. They don't go to McDonald's. She's never fed him any of that stuff. He doesn't even know what a Big Mac tastes like. Why is he gaining weight? I don't know. I said, try keto. It's working for me. He's lost 65 pounds. And now you have to understand, he's a black belt in Taekwondo. He's been working out every day, teaching class, going to class, weighing 210 pounds. Started keto, and he's down to like 165 and not hungry. Now he, they eat maybe one meal a day, and he's a teenage boy. And changing my diet, my son's lost 20 pounds, and he didn't even plan on it. <laughs> so, and he's he's going to be 18, and he's like six foot four. Where he got that from, I don't know. But um, so and my daughter, that fathead book, I'm it's on my Amazon wish list because my daughter's eight, and my in-laws bring moon pies and stuff to the house and. I keep hiding it and throwing it away. I don't want my daughter eating it. So I might give that book to my mother-in-law first. <laughs> <laughs> so fantastic. I think it works. Sure. Yeah. You're so, welcome. Two questions. Sure. If I might. Uh -huh. So what were the foods that were causing the weight gain for the son who, who – But They're Italian. I would guess pasta. <laughs> I'm going to repeat, for those of you watching, her son has lost 65 pounds in about six months. She's lost two and a half pounds because she's this big. Uh, that's, a, that's amazing. But no, no junk foods, no yeah, fast foods. He's never been McDonald's. For, I mean, he's never been separated. Yeah, but with what I know and maybe what... What I know, what the rest of you know, is the bread and the pasta is, is enough. Homemade bread right? and pasta. Yeah. yeah. Homeschooled, meaning was he getting food at school? Yeah. 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 Trading yeah. and yeah. No. Yeah, but so, but that's a good lesson that it doesn't matter what the packaging is or what it looks like. It, it can or where it comes from. The fast food, the slow food, the could be in a wrapper, it could be in a bread wrapper it could be in a pasta it all boils down it all gets digested to sugar in your stomach but it looks different um, or it might have just been the carbs. Well, he's stress he's eating. a comfort stress eater. Mm. And, and I'm the opposite, so I. It's so hard you can comfort eat on a low carb diet. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can make them yes. <laughs> yes. So, in fact, I don't even. So, this is a, a big battle among the, the psychologists and nutritionists and the low carbers. Because I don't need a psychologist to deal with the food cravings. Now, I don't need someone to psychologically help with emotional eating in most people because you just tell people to eat bacon or, or something else which which satisfies the moment but doesn't give the insulin and you still have fat burning going on. And what happens in most people is that the emotional eating fades away because actually the brain starts to realize, gosh, I'm not getting what I – I'm not getting that sugar hit that I really wanted. Um, Reminds me of studies we did using cigarettes that had no nicotine in them. You can give cigarettes to people who smoke that have no nicotine. And the first day, they let it, well, these are pretty good. Taste a little different. Second day, oh, not so bad. Well, the third day, oh, these are terrible because <laughs> there's no nicotine in them. So the same idea that the food cues, the taste, all of that stuff will satisfy much of the emotional eating but not give you the sugar and insulin spike or rise after the meal. So, so I don't actually talk much about emotional eating. I acknowledge that it, it really exists and most of us do it, but do it with food that have no, has no carbs and it fades away.
And of course, we teach other ways to deal with emotions that, that other than eating. I mean, that's the grand scheme. Yeah. <laughs> well, punching bag or. Well, yeah, Taekwondo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, reaching adulthood will take care of a lot of his permanent issues. Okay. Well, that's great. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. I asked a question about this because I've been here for about six months. And I have this strange phenomenon going on where I used to have my cycle and I used to be like five times a lot of ways. And when I started my cycle, it would go away and I'd lose five times a lot of ways. It seems to be reversed now. I seem to keep that water away for like the three weeks that I'm not on my cycle, and I lose it when I am on my cycle. Most people think that's not a problem, but I'm getting all the weight right here in my chest, and it's quite painful. Any mm. For those of you who couldn't hear, um, she was sharing that before she was keto. Monthly hormonal fluctuations would result in retaining some water for about a week and then it going away And it seems to be reversed now that the hormonal fluctuations are Retaining the water for three weeks and losing it for one week. I can't I cannot speak to that at all Does anyone have any experience or do you have any experience with that dr. Weston? <laughs> that was a joke you're supposed to laugh Oh. Okay. <laughs> An adult beverage. <laughs> so, um, when I think of fluid retention, I think of either salt or carbs. Carbs make you retain sodium as well as salt. So, when you cut away the carbs, take away the carbs, your body gets rid of salt. You lose water weight initially. You might lose 14 pounds in two weeks of water weight. Um, Thus, if you're among a carb-eating world, the rest of the folks here, and you're holding on to salt excessively because of the carbs, keeping the salt down is really important. And that's why salt is restricted among those carb eaters out there, the rest of the world, on blood pressure medicines, and you have to be careful. So the carbs and salt can raise the fluid, and then there are the hormones. And so you're noticing a, a cyclic change in, but it's opposite, just not, so it may be, uh, uh, are you perimenopausal, any chance? Or, yeah, pregnant? <laughs> Someone asked if she was pregnant. So you did, you did mention a major uh, uh, hormonal factor, which is stress. So cortisol goes up. It, it's really underrated and underestimated because we can't directly measure it all the time. But that may be what's going on. Um, but um, so, so this is not a weight loss diet, a keto diet. It's a fat burning diet. Can you repeat that, please? It's not a weight loss diet. And I had one person at the class say, "Then why am I here?" <laughs> <laughs> no, it leads to weight loss if it cuts your hunger out and you eat less and you're you're accessing your fat store. So it's just a fat burning diet that has a great consequence of weight loss. So in fact, some people gain weight. If your metabolism is a this, this certain kind, and if your nutrition is really distorted, like you're not getting enough protein, when you correct the diet to this way of eating, you're eating more protein, you might actually gain weight. And people, well, but I thought that was a weight loss diet. No, it's just a fat burning diet. You burn what you eat, you're eating fat as your fuel, and I have no idea what's going on in your body. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love a doctor says, I don't know. I just don't so know. So another highlight, our, our good friend and colleague, Adam Nally, Dr. Nally, Doc Muscles, anyone watch, Adam, was on the cruise and did a um, one of their podcast shows, uh, Jimmy and Adam. It was great to see. You can always tell because he's wearing his cowboy hat in a distance. And he's strapping. He's got that holster thing or whatever was on his leg. You may not have noticed notice. that. Yes, yeah. I noticed that. <laughs> So uh, it was great to see Dr. Nally. Um, who else uh, gave great talks? Um, um, you, you know, I actually missed her lecture this time. I've seen her before. The young woman from Sweden who talked about beco becoming an empowered yeah. patient. This comes up a lot. I know that people will just ask me, and you hear the phrase, my doctor's going to put me on statins if I don't do something. My doctor's going to do this to me. Yeah. You're, you're a medical doctor, and can you, uh, you know, you can't tell people, just ignore the doctor. 
But how as a, what is an effective response, you as a medical doctor, and assume you have less, not less of your personality and more of some other medical personalities, if you say, but Dr. Westman, I don't want to take statins. So oh, there what's was the a, response? So Hannah Bothius uh, does teaching at a distance, <laughs> a low carb, especially for people with type 1 diabetes. She has type 1 diabetes herself. <coughs> she was from Sweden but lives in Switzerland. And I just had to make a plug for Low Carb Universe in Mallorca, Spain in November because Hannah Bothius uh, and her husband are planning it and putting it on. So she was on the cruise and gave a great talk about being an empowered patient which may be uh, strange to a European crowd, or it, it was actually very familiar to me. In fact, I kind of grew up with the idea that I was, an, I was a health advisor. I'm not in charge of, you, you know, I'm not gonna dictate what you do as the patient. I'm more an advisor. And that's basically what she was saying, is that choose someone on your healthcare team as an advisor who you really want, and, and really is, is helpful, and then fire one if it's not good enough, the person's not good enough, and her analogy was like you're an elite athlete training for the Olympics. You're going to get a coach who's going to help you and, and uplift you, not bring you down with, oh, you can't or you shouldn't or you must kinds mm -hmm. of things. So it was a great talk. Um, and in, just in my practice, I, I make that up front that I'm just an advisor. And, and if someone doesn't want to take a statin medicine, we just go over the, the risks and benefits. And in my opinion, the benefits are pretty low in certain in most circumstances where other doctors think everyone should be using them and make let the person make the decision and if other doctors have scare tactics and and ask them if their their uh, their quarterly quota of people on statins or meeting the, their guideline is why they're pushing you so hard there are some doctors who who are given a criteria back you know the guideline says 50 60% of your patients need to be on statins. Why aren't they? So doctors get grief, and that's why they turn on the thumb screws in certain situations. Um, but now the statins are, are um, they don't use numbers to drive statin um, blood to cholesterol numbers anymore. They came up with a, a guideline where you put in the certain variables, certain factors, and then it comes up with a percent risk for heart disease. Actually, it's a little, little, in, it's a little devious because now it doesn't matter what your cholesterol is. If you're at a certain level of risk, you ought to be on a statin drug. So in one way, it takes away the focus from a number in the blood, but in the other way, it pushes, on, it assumes that a 7% risk of your recurrent or, or current heart attack is a threshold that you want action on. But it really should be your decision. So, you know, if you have a 7% risk of something, that means you have a 93% chance of not having it. You know, so individuals look at disease risk differently than guidelines and populations and doctors. So um, I have had some people come to me just so I could say, no, you don't need to be on a statin. <laughs> I, might, I could have just said that on the phone. But... Uh, but you do assess, I mean, in all seriousness, if someone's had a heart attack and um, there's good evidence that you should probably be on a statin if you're a carb eater. So all of the research has been among carb eaters, carb burners, all those people in glucosis. <laughs> bless their hearts. Um, but so in, some, in the right research setting, I'll say, you know, hey, wait a minute. You got to prove that those drugs are actually beneficial in us people who don't eat carbs, those who are fat burners, you're assuming that it's going to have the same benefit, same effects. When, I mean, Dr. Atkins knew this, that just changing the diet has an effect like a drug that you're treating for cholesterol. So it reduces inflammation, it raises good cholesterol, lowers triglycerides. So, but we're in that gray area if uh, a guideline, a health system requires a certain level of evidence and studies and all that, they're going to push statins on you whether or not you're a carb burner or a fat burner, they're just not gonna, that doesn't compute. You know? um, so that, that's my long researcher answer of we just don't know. So statins might help out, but we don't know in the context of low carb. And I guess it's an individual thing, but how do you address your doctor? How do you, what's the most effective way 
to communicate to your doctor, I would really like to know why you're, you're yeah, prescribing so, this to me. So I guess it's a bit like um, any relationship. Do you have a way to get out of it? Right? <laughs> so if you're, if you're assigned to a doctor and you have no choice, then you got to work. With, but if, if you just don't like the way, I, I mean, I've heard all sorts of stories about what other doctors say. And I, you know, I'll say, you know, why do you go back? You know, well, I don't have a choice. Well, okay, then you have to deal with the personality, and, and education is probably the best. Or you just say, thank you, let's just agree to disagree. Can we talk about something else? Um, or you take the prescription, and you don't fill it, but but now on the computer, I know if you filled the prescription or not. Oh, so I yeah. get it, yeah, I get it. So, so fill the prescription, you don't have to take the pill, so yeah. You know, anyway, so Big Brother now knows. Uh, I can't tell if you took the pill or not. I, so that, anyway, uh, wow. but why would you want to pay? So, yeah, fire the doctor. Yeah. So is anyone in a system where they can't change their doctor? So may, or, well, yeah. So yes, new doctor. Yes, yeah. I have a question about page four. Oh, okay, so switching oh, gears. there was hot to, just to let you know. Um, I think I know what you're going to say. Maybe not. As you know, last time I was here, last month I walked in town. Great. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, come on up. You want to come on? Come on down. And uh, speak was, to the man was, with his ears. Uh, I was here. I missed my little mic. <laughs> <laughs> I was here a month ago and started doing page four. I have lost 10 pounds. I haven't been on any meds. My blood sugars are down 130, 120, down like that. So it's working. What were they That's before? It. They would be up at 140, 160 before, okay. remember? Down 20 to 30 points? Yeah. So um, my question is, how long do you stay on page four? Until you lose your body fat that you want to? Forever. Or forever? As long as you feel good. I mean, but I miss the nuts and the wine. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the nuts and the wine. <laughs> but so how would how would a, a how would you answer that question? I know I know what I would say, but you know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say first? I'm gonna eat this way. This is the way I'm gonna eat. Now, that said, and I do have a question for you. Is it possible that once you begin to heal, I assume we can call it healing from the inside, we've, we're less metabolically damaged, if that's the right phrase, and I don't know what the test for that is. Is it possible that you can tolerate more carbs and ease into some stuff, because I don't know the answer to that question, and then we're going to loop back around to a recent controversy online today, instigated by Miss Christine. But yes, <laughs> but so I would say I'm eating this way. No, no, no. 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 Here, let, no so, me. but I want to clarify. Yeah. Page four. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm on page four forever. Did you? You've lost ten pounds since last month, and you had been kind of stuck. You were frustrated, right? I, I had plateaued at 180, and I finally wow. The and so, plateau. what was the biggest change that you made? Leaving off wine and nuts. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> so, um, so you can eat this way forever. Yeah. That, so those of us who were taught this would kill you <laughs> earlier in our lives have realized that this won't kill you. I mean, we have a high predictable likelihood of that. Okay. In fact, it helps a lot of things. So get, you have to get away the notion and those old books written that you only do this for two weeks and you advance it. Those are old books. So you can do this forever. Now, whether it's tolerable and whether it's meeting your needs and whether the trade-off of staying away from certain foods is worth it is really an individual decision. So I will tell everyone, no nuts. No, stay the pace lower and all this. And then if someone comes in the next week, we well, you know I really want some nuts. I said, well, try it and see what happens. So now some people go out and they're the ones that I didn't want to start eating the nuts in the first place because they can't stop eating the nuts. Mm -hmm. And they go, rah, 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 and then, they're, then they you know, destroy it, and then people come back mad at me, but I said they could have the nuts. So I can't win. <laughs> uh, so, but I understand that. Okay? And so if it's a, um, 
It's all a, num a matter of the number of grams of carbs. So if you can stay to five grams of nuts, now that's a handful, not a heaping not handful. Not even a handful. And, right. and, it's a, and one strategy is you get the, the uh, 100 calorie pack, or you put it in Ziploc bags, or you take out a handful, then you put it way up high <laughs> so you can't just go back. Some people sprinkle nuts, and, and you know, that's fine if it works. So, so just try it. So just try it. What see. about, what, about yeah. what you read about uh, people stay keto and then they're recommended to have a carb fest? Mm. Yeah. Doesn't that just ruin everything? I don't even know the logic behind that. I don't either. Or the physiological reason. Why would that be? I'm allergic to peanuts. I feel much better when I don't eat peanuts. All my inflammation goes away. So, you know, once a month I want to have a handful of peanuts. That doesn't make any sense to me. So, I think of it in a different way. Um, yeah, I know. So these are all appealing things to get you to buy books and products and all that. Okay, there's really no science behind. I've heard it as a cheat day uh, or whatever day, uh, or you have all of the carbs you want within an hour. And 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 if it happened that it worked for you, you wrote a book about it, and then they everyone thinks what works for one person will work for everyone. Yeah. So it might or it might not. But the way I think of this is that when you're a fat burning machine. You've revved up all of your engines, your gears, your, your enzymes, your fat burning. And, and what Jeff Volick said last fall, last winter, and he's the dar uh, darling researcher. He's a, a you know, really good low-carb researcher at Ohio State who's getting all of these new data and looking at it. Um, being a fat burner and being in a keto state is, is a highly, con highly prized situation to be in okay so think of it and it's fragile so when you when you consume carbs you have to burn them our body just can't dispose of them well and if you're carbon tolerant then that's it's even harder so uh the way he looked at it is that if you've been doing this six months and you optimize all your fat burning you could just keep doing what you're doing and actually what i see is that i'm dealing with the social aspects of just getting the habit eating gone. The idea that you have to you know, turn off the internet, you know, don't look out there anymore, or, you know, because these are people who are searching, 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 who've never had the basic principles of how to become a fat burning machine. And so they might try something for a week or two, it doesn't work, or they get bad advice. And um, I didn't create page four, in fact, that's my deniability. Because yeah. <laughs> there's fruit on that page four. It's not mine. But um, it was actually from Dr. Atkins in his clinic. So they used it for 30 years and took away all the trigger foods and, and found foods that people in New York City like. That's why you know it doesn't have moose <laughs> on it. But we did it in, in Vancouver in the First Nations group. So we put moose. No, not not moose like a dessert, but like moose. Moose, yeah, like a moose with a with a. <laughs> so, what was your other question about the nuts and the oh, the wine? Well, the wine is very interesting. It is so is interesting. It, it is very interesting. So it may not affect the ketosis, but it does have calories in it. So if you're trying to lose weight and you want to do everything you can to lose weight, don't have wine. But if you're trying to manage stress deal with an ordinate, whatever else, an occasional glass of wine, I find most people do okay. And so well, it's not forbidden. In between last month and this month's meeting, I went to a conference in Nashville. And I did have a few glasses of wine. But it, it really, I just stayed level and then started dropping. So th that's what we all need to do. I know I've had to tweak what I've done over the three and a half years, mm -hmm. and I think we all have to do that. You start, you lose really quickly, really fast. Oh, that's fantastic, and then you get smaller and older, um, rarely taller, and and then you have to start tweaking what you what you're doing. And so you find out that you can tolerate wine, and you're willing to take that stabilization for a little while. And somebody else says, you know, whatever works then. But we all. So we all have to ask those questions. And like Dr. Westman said, I had to learn that a, um, a portion size of nuts was not the lid from the Costco jar <laughs> because that's what you do with nuts, right? That's how they're designed. You take the big lid off, you put it on the countertop, you start typing on your computer, and you dump a whole bunch of nuts into the lid.
and then you do it again. So, and then you, and, and you don't even know that you And you're the one who taught me the difference between the home pour and the restaurant pour of wine. That was an interesting. Oh, snap. The six and the nine ounce, yeah. Well, but so okay. alcohol, is you don't have to go, alcohol is an interesting thing because um, there are a lot of programs that have kind of moralistic approach, right? This is just teaching you how your body works. If you want to have whatever, this doesn't say you can't have it. And other programs, other people bring that in into this. This is just teaching us how our body works and how the alcohol is the first thing that's burnt because it is thought of as a, as a toxin. And so you, you're gonna introduce that. It's just something to burn again before you get to the fat on your body. So if you have a glass of wine and you notice your weight doesn't change, it doesn't go up, and you go right back on and it starts changing, then you've learned how your body responds. Um, now with, with uh, alcohol, there's another issue that I learned a lot with helping people to quit smoking, is that you want to avoid situations where you would normally have done what you did and you want to avoid alcohol because it lowers your inhibitions to do the things that you're trying to avoid. Boy, howdy. So, so the moose might look more, the M-O-U-S-S-E, -S <laughs> might look more <laughs> inviting if you've had a glass of wine. Yeah, like so that's dancing just a lot. Right? Yeah, like, like dancing a lot. But what's wrong so with how do you <laughs> find out about the cruise? Go to the Low Carb Cruise Facebook page. And they've got great folks who coordinate it. it. It's Jimmy Moore is always very humble to say it's not his cruise, but he he doesn't sponsor, but he it or people are there for him. And go to the Low Carb Cruise Facebook page, and they they're they're posting photos from this last one for another couple of weeks, and then they they already have information about next year's. And if you do everything through Debbie Hubs and Elsa, they're great. I mean, they really made it very very simple. It was our first cruise, really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. They, they, the low carb lectures were great. Um, the cruise was great, and there's a lot to be said for being pampered every minute of every cruises. day. Uh, it's I'm fantastic. Well, there is, there's another, there's a one that Debbie is starting in the fall in the Northeast. It's for beginners. Was for it beginners. Keto low carb 101. 101? Low carb 101 out of Boston. Yeah. So you can find that information there as well. Okay. Now, we need to wrap up here pretty okay. quickly, but I do want to thank you. I'm so glad the 10 pounds in a month, that's fantastic. There was slight controversy today on the Keto After 40 and Beyond Facebook page, which now has- Is that like, one yours? I, I started the group, but it's not mine. It belongs to the world. Okay. Um, it now has about 30,000 members, which is pretty cool. But you, fantastic. it really is. Uh, Christine- Well, I'm sending my husband. Okay, oh, here's what, here's what happened. So Christine sees- We went to see the doctor four. yesterday, and before we had a true copy of page four, but when he looked at it, he said, no, that's not right. And he put a line through something. Through, I'm asking you if you just Through berries. It, and John Hancock says initial, initial next to that was. Yeah, so, uh, so, 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 so he says, so Christine writes, Dr. Westman saw my list of page four and struck through berries. Ouchie. And then people just got beclumped. Wait, so <laughs> you, you put this out there? I, I, I don't even know what you're no, talking about. Um, but that's not, you said earlier fruit. I thought berries were that. Oh. Strawberries and raspberries. Oh. oh, you thought they were? I mean, I thought they were loud. I thought it was a berry as opposed to fruit. Berries are just small fruits. Oh, stop it! <laughs> really? Yeah. So, um, but this is really good. this is like page four point oh one. It's very close. It, it may work for just about everyone because the amount of berries is very small. Quarter of a so, cup. Per yeah. day. So, but strictly speaking, on um, let's see what. Oh, ah, that was fun. And um, oh, yeah, yeah. So that so that's wait, that's some evidence. Okay. Okay. So can I submit some seen. evidence? Yes, you may submit evidence in your in your defense. <laughs> okay, that was real. Here we go. Page four, and he struck through berries, which is making many people sad. Well, so if, my, if it's working, I don't, I don't with it right? okay. yeah. but for most people it's hard to control the berries like hard to control the nuts so <laughs> three pistachio nuts huh? <laughs> just about <laughs> well, but you might be able to you might, well yeah. if you can okay so this is a uh, um, page four put on a wallet card I had so many people losing page four this so one of the students came through and said let's put it on a wallet card okay so he miniaturized the font 
So you can, you know, you can barely read it. <laughs> but there are no berries. There are no berries. <laughs> that, that, I'm sure that was for space no, so considerations. Show it. Now, is there a place where anyone can get that? So and it's a backwards, of course. Sorry. Is but. A, uh, it says pepper, pepper pumpkin. <laughs> Maybe it's pepper, yeah, comma, it's pumpkin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very tiny. Okay. Thank well, you for the editorial. Thank, thank you, guys. This was really great. It's 8 o'clock. We need to wrap up. But this, I think, was a great... Oh, oh. Come, on, Come on, sister. Come on, sister. We're all friends here. Yeah, I got into this through your book and Jimmy Moore. You know, and, and so I started eating a lot... I started eating a lot of fat. You know, well, your page four doesn't have all that much fat on it. Right. And and so well, it I comes was with, that comes with protein. Yeah, but you know I was a coconut oil and coconut milk oh. and um, butter oh. and you know and so I'm puzzled there. Just kind of oh. want to get some ideas from you about that. I mean, don't do it. So, so the whole, the long story. Oh, that's why I'm wanting to minutes. know. Yeah. Two minutes. Thank you. So page four was made before all of the current hype about yeah. coconut oil, MCT oil, putting butter in coffee. That's a very new phenomenon. And it has not been tested in thousands and thousands and thousands of people. So you're testing it. Okay. And so the problem with oil and butter in the past, now whether this works, we don't know. So I'm very conservative. I'm going to say, look, there, you have to limit the oils. And, and it's up to two tablespoons a day, cream and oils. So that includes coconut oil, MCT, butter, all that. So oils, because there are calories in there, they are strictly limited. So actually the page four has a, a carb limitation, the 20 gram. It also has a calorie limitation because the amount of the high calorie foods are limited. And it's just really hard to eat five ribeyes you know, on the, uh, you know, there's all that you want. So yeah, so the the old school. What I was taught. This is Atkins, Eads, uh, Rosedale, Bernstein, uh, Vernon. I was taught don't add in all these other oils, and so that's why page four is, is the time honored, worked in tens of thousands of people. That's why I don't endorse these other oils, and it's not on here. But you'll hear about this other stuff. It's really it's let your your own mileage may vary, and it's used at your own risk. Because this is a fat-burning diet, not a weight-loss diet, and your body doesn't care where the fat comes, correct? So you'll burn the fat that you eat. And if I don't have much fat on my body anyway, which you never have, would it be, make more sense that I might be okay eating a little bit more fat? I don't Are you trying to burn? lose that weight? No, I'm happy where I am. Then you might be able to. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, but you know, it's another, but coming at another approach, has there ever been a time when people would just sit around and drink coconut oils. <laughs> and so it's, right. it's kind of a, it's a new, new concept. It's yeah. a new concept to have Fruit Loops every morning. Well, look what that got us. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, so I, uh, it's not on page four, and oils have limitation on page four. Thank you very much for the clarification. I really appreciate it. Thank you for that. By the way, is it working? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. But I'm really glad. Okay, this was really great. I, I know we, um, the time actually went really quickly. So thank you for everyone who showed up. I hope you'll continue to show up and ask questions and spread the word and influence the next month. Last, next no, month. next month. Thank you very much, Amy. Next month, uh, we will not be meeting on the first Tuesday of the month because that's the 4th of July. So we are meeting. Are we still playing on the set? On the, the 11th. The 11th we're yeah. going to meet. So yeah. that's the only difference. Thank you, Amy. For yes, ma'am. Oh no. Thank you for sharing that. For those of you who could not hear, do you want to come up? Come on, come on. So, Doris is a, a long-term low-carb support group uh, 
attendee, and also, um, I think you've lost probably half your body weight now. I've lost over because I lost 140 pounds. Lost 140 pounds, um, which you know, today, um, and then mentioned that she had the, a severe mental illness that was basically gone after about 10 days, and has been gone about 10 years. And uh, that it's we actually wrote a, a case study in the medical literature um, about your experience. Thank you so much. I, I really have. I've been through so much. I've been in the nutrition cell all about 16, 17 years old. And when I got out, I was on my own kind of medication. And I came off every single one of them. I don't take any of them. I take any of them. I don't, but I don't take anything else. I went through all kinds of things, trying to commit suicide. I wanted to die. I didn't want to get on this earth. I didn't think I belonged here. But when I got in with you, things changed drastically. And I'm not just. I had to learn how to go over again, so that I had to take the have me made. I had to learn how to cook for myself. I'm out by myself, maybe years old, one on every one. But you know what? I think, listen to me. I got to one. That's all you got to do is just one. It's taken like me 10 years, that's true. But it took me a lifetime to put it on. And that 10 years is nothing compared to the two years before that. And I'm no, I'm not been on medication. Came off of everything in 2009, then in 2007, same thing happened. I'm not going back on it. I'm not going to be through a anymore. I've learned I can live with that. I can live and do and be and do what God wants me to do. And that's everything. Well, uh, may I say you're one of my heroes? <laughs> well, so. you you all know you you got me there. <laughs> and you and God, you got me there. Nice That's probably uh, close up. Huh? Yes. Thanks. Thank you, Doris. That was that was that's amazing. Actually, I was weighing three hundred fifteen yeah. pounds. Started out three hundred sixteen pounds, and on tons of medication and suicidal and I, none of that. I had fifteen pills alone at night. Wow. Died shot during the day. That's amazing. That was at home too. No, not in the institution. Either. That was at home. Well, thank you. Couldn't even sleep in bed. Had to sleep in you know what? I'll take a big <laughs> Thank you, Tori. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, we are going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you guys so much. See you hopefully next month. TTFN. Keep the carbs below 20. Uh, Only when you're hungry. <laughs>